Today I'm going to give you a quick lesson on radical equations. Now, to solve radical equations, you need to know how to solve simple linear equations, quadratic equations, and a special rule in solving quadratics, which is factoring, and of course, your multiplication table. Now, radical equations are basically equations with radical symbols, and radicals are symbols like square roots, cube roots, fourth root, third root, and so on. Now, you also need to remember that to undo the square root in an equation, all you have to do is to take the power with the same root. So if you're getting rid of the square root, you're going to take the square of both sides. And if you're getting rid of a fourth root, you're going to take the fourth or the power of four on both sides. So problem number one is an example of a radical equation. And Equation number two is also another form of radical equations. So these are some examples of equations that are considered to be a radical equation. Now let's solve a simple radical equation to find the value of the variable. Now in this particular example, our first group is giving us square root of m plus 3 is equal to 9. Now to find the solution of this radical equation, we need to have m by itself. Now, to do that, we're going to simply isolate square root of m by subtracting 3 on both sides. And by doing so, we'll end up with square root of m is equal to 6. And since m is still not by itself, because we still have to get rid of the square root, we're going to square both sides. And by doing so, we're undoing the square root symbol because square root and square cancel each other out. And we are now left with m is equal to 6 cubed or 6 squared, which is equal to m equal to 36. So this is basically how we solve for a radical equation. We need to first isolate the radical symbol or the radical expression by adding or subtracting or dividing the constants around the square root to start your um, process in solving for the variable. Now let's take a look at square root of x minus 3 is equal to 4 which is quite similar to the first example. So all we have to do is to isolate the square root of x by adding 3 on both sides and since x is by itself the only thing that's left to do is to square both sides. So x is equal to 49. Now this equation, square root of x minus 3 equal to 4, is quite different from square root of x minus 3 is equal to 4 when x minus 3 is inside the radical. So when this happens, we know that the radical symbol or the square root is already by itself. So the only thing that we're going to do is to square both sides, leaving us with x minus 3 is equal to 16. So by solving for the equation, x is now equal to 19. So these are some of the types of radical equations that you need to watch out for. Now for the second group of examples that I'm going to show you, you will notice that we, that we have two variables or variables on both sides, and you are also noticing that the square root of x plus 5 is not by itself. So just like what we did on the first few examples, we're going to isolate square root of x plus 5 by getting rid of the constant. And in this case, we're subtracting 1 on both sides, leaving us with x minus 1 equal to square root of x plus 5. And now all we are left to do is to square both sides. And by taking the square of both sides, we're going to get rid of the radical symbol. However, you will notice that we have x minus 1 quantity squared inside, I mean, on the left side of the equation. So to expand or simplify x minus 1 raised to the second power, we're going to multiply x minus 1 times x minus 1, leaving us with x squared minus 2x plus 1. And since we are able to get rid of the radical symbol by squaring both sides, we are only, ha we are only left with x plus 5. Now that we have a polynomial without any radicals, the next thing that we're going to be working on in this set of examples is to equate the equation to zero. And to equate this to zero, we're going to need to get rid of x plus 5 on the right side of the equation. And to, and to get rid of that, we're going to subtract 5 on both sides and subtract x on both sides so it will equal to zero. And in the process, we'll have x squared minus 3x minus 4 is equal to zero. So now we have a familiar equation 
of quadratics wherein we can factor it out using the big X method. So you just need to look for the factors of negative 4 that will give you negative 3 when you add them up. And the two factors that we are looking for will simply be x minus 4 times x plus 1 equal to 0. And now that we're able to factor it out, we are now going to use the zero product property to solve for the value of the x. And by using the zero product property, we will end or we'll end up with x minus 4 is equal to 0 and x plus 1 is equal to 0. And by solving for our two sets of equations, we'll have the solutions for our radical equations, which are x minus x equal to 4 and x equal to negative 1. So this is how we solve quadrat or radical equations when we need to um, or when we are presented with variables on both sides. Now, take a look at this example that we have. We have 7 plus square root of x plus 5 is equal to 9. So this one is not as complex as compared to uh, the previous examples that I showed you because all we need to do is to isolate the square root symbol by subtracting 7 on both sides and taking the square of both sides and using these steps we're able to get rid of the radical symbol and now all we need to do is to solve for x by subtracting 5 on both sides leaving us x equal to negative 1. So sometimes we are given um, radical equations that are easy to solve and sometimes we are challenged with some radical equations that needs a little bit of skills in algebra to be able to find the value of the equation. Now for this set of example I have the third set which gives you a different root. So the previous examples that I gave you are all square root and in this case we now have the cube root and as you will notice, minus 2, which is our constant, is still with the radical symbol. So just like what we did on the other examples, we need to isolate the radical by adding 2 on both sides. So now that the radical symbol is now by itself on the left side of the equation, we just need to get rid of the cube root. And to get rid of the cube root, we're going to cube both sides. Or cube the left side of the equation and 2. So we'll end up with cube root of 3x plus 4 raised to the third power equal to 2 raised to 3. And we know that cube root or cube can undo the cube root so we can cancel it out leaving us with 3x plus 4 is equal to 2 raised to the third power and we know that 2 raised to the third power is equal to 8. Now, since we are going to solve for the value of x, we only need two steps to solve for x from this point of the solution. So by subtracting 4 on both sides, we are left with 3x equal to 4, and by dividing both sides by 3, x is equal to 4 over 3. So this is our solution for cube root of 3x plus 4 minus 2 is equal to 0 using this method. And this set of examples that we're working on now, as you will notice, we have two separate radical expressions. And to solve radical expressions similar to this one, we need to put the rational or the radical expression on both sides of the equation. And in this case, what I'm going to do is to add square root of x minus 2 on both sides so that I will have both the radical expression on the other side of or on each side of my equal sign and by doing so I'll end up with square root of x plus 3 equal to square root of x minus 1 plus 1 so what I'm going to do then is to square both sides so that I can eliminate one of the radical symbol in one of the side of the equations and in this case I'm going to be able to get rid of the radical symbol on the left side of the equation because square root or square can undo the square root so I'm going to end up with x plus 3 on the left side and on the right side it's going to be a different method because I cannot simply cancel the square root because I have a constant 1 right next to the radical so what I can do is expand my expression by multiplying square root of x minus 2 plus 1 times square root of x 
plus 2 minus 1, or square root of x minus 2 plus 1. And by using the FOIL method, or multiplication of binomial, we'll end up with x minus 2 plus 2 square root of x minus 2 plus 1. So this is now the expanded form of our left side of the equation. So our new equation will look like this. We have x plus 3 on the left side, and on the right side of the equation, we'll have x minus 2 plus 2 squared of x minus 2 plus 1. Now, since we still have the radical symbol, what we can do is to isolate the radical symbol by combining like terms. Notice that we can combine negative 2 and positive 1. And if we combine these two constants, we are now left with x plus 3 is equal to x minus 1 plus 2 squared of x minus 2. But we still have x minus 1 right next to 2 or positive 2 squared of x minus 2. And since we need to isolate the radical, which is 2 squared of x minus 2, what we can do is to get rid of x minus 1 by the additive inverse property. So by adding 1 on both sides and subtracting x on both sides, we'll be able to isolate our radical. And now we have 4 equal to 2 squared of x minus 2. By solving for x, the steps will now be a little bit simpler than the first half of our solution because now we only have 4, squared of, 4 equal to 2 squared of x minus 2 and by dividing both sides by 2, we're getting closer and closer to solving for x. So since our equation still has the square root symbol or radical symbol, we need to square both sides so we can get rid of the radical. And by squaring both sides, we'll end up with 4 equal to x minus 2, and x is equal to 6. So this is how we solve this radical equation that is quite complex than the other examples that I have given you. And sometimes, two radicals is not going to be as complicated as this set of example because sometimes you will have examples like this you are seeing two radicals on both sides of the equations but since there's no constant in any of the radical expressions that you are seeing all we need to do is to square both sides and get rid of the radical symbol so we have 3n minus 2 is equal to n plus 6 and by solving for n 3n equal to n plus 8 will turn into 2n is equal to 8 leaving us with n equal to Four. So this is now how we solve for radical equation using the algebraic steps that I have presented to you in the examples that I have given.